Hello and uh, welcome to a very special episode of The Good Dram Show. As you can see, I'm joined here by my good friend Mr Tobacco, or Green Crotch. <laughs> <laughs> um, why is he sitting here? Well, we thought it would be interesting uh, to do a, uh, a whiskey and cigar comparison. Um, neither of us have, uh, have done that and it seems like it's a very in vogue kind of thing to do. So, um, uh, first off, uh, Glyn will introduce the cigar that we'll be uh, smoking this evening and then once we've done that, I will be introducing uh, the range of whiskies that we've got to go with it. And um, hopefully this will be uh, interesting, informative and um, probably a touch chaotic. So, uh, right, without further ado, the cigar then. Right, how are we doing? So, today the cigar we're going to be smoking is the St. Louis Ray Petit Corona. Uh, the St. Louis Ray brand has been around since the 50s, originally made for the English market. Um, did disappear for quite a while. Um, was bought back about four or five years ago. They came back into distribution within the UK. Very popular in Hong Kong. Um, very popular amongst people who like to age cigars, connoisseurs, things like that. They're more of a fuller flavoured cigar. Um, lots of nutty, woody, spicy flavours to them. I've never smoked the Petit Corona myself. I've had one of the A's. Me, me neither. Yeah. So this is new to me as well. <laughs> I've had one of the A's and quite a few of the Regios. The Regios are wonderful. They're kind of a Hermoso number four. A fraction longer and a fraction thinner than a Robusto, but on the whole it's a Robusto basically. So, as always with all cigar reviews, I have to start with the, uh, the aroma from the stick. So, um, but also, first, construction-wise, it's a very, very roughly made cigar. It's not a very smooth, silky wrapper at all. Lots and lots of teeth on the underside, some quite thick veins on them as well. And I say it's not a smooth cigar at all. It looks like it's a... Well, uh, let's hope it's a smooth cigar to <laughs> smoke. <laughs> but none of the St. Louis Rays are that well constructed. They're made in the Remy and Gilletta factory, and as I said, production is very small these days. So, the aroma from the stick is slightly woody. A little bit nutty and quite dusty, fusty kind of aroma to it. Yeah, that's got a slight, not quite fish foody, but, but yeah, almost, yeah. And from the foot, it's very dusty. And it's got that very fresh um, Cuba tobacco kind of smell. As Chris mentioned, the fish foody smell, it's just got residual ammonia and things like that. Uh, this cigar's probably two years old, so give it another three years, that would have gone, that would have refined it out it's a fairly, little bit. fairly light, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's fairly light in aroma. But... So I'm hoping that none of the ammonia comes through in the taste, it doesn't sell, smell strong enough. Not many Cuban cigars, unless you get them fresh from Cuba, have that kind of ammonia sort of smell. So we have a pre-cut, and uh, I'll just do the cold drop. Mm. There's a little bit of... There's a bit of ammonia on the cold draw. Very, very light, woody sort of flavours, not a great deal. And predominantly a kind of... Dusty, fusty taste. Yeah, very dusty. Mm. And a few subtle hints of woods as well. So, right, we're just gonna light this up and be back in a second. Right, we're back. Let's uh, let's have a taste of the cigar and um, let's see how uh, what the flavours in uh, in the cigar are like. Some creaminess to it, a little bit of sweetness. Yep, lightly, lightly woody. Mm. Slight little bit of a bitter, almost coffee, coffee beanie sort of flavour to it, but not yeah. a great deal. I did get that a lot in the Regio, but later on, not from the word go. I'm lacking the pepper and spice of the Regio as well, which is quite surprising. I'm still expecting a Monte Cristo type peppery, spicy flavour, as you do with the Regio, but. Mind you, do you think that will develop given a bit mm. of time? It's got a very sort of dry, to me, a sort of a leafy mm. kind of flavour, sort of a burnt leaf. I mean, I know it's a, it is a leaf, yeah, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. I know what yeah, you mean, yeah. yeah. Saying so slightly biscuity, hay sort of cereal mm. creaminess to it, but no, a lot lighter than the Regio from the word go, definitely. But as Chris said, slightly slenderer ring gauge, a little bit of extra length might allow that to develop. And it's burning very quickly as well. Mm. And tracking sideburn in a smidge bag. Right, okay, um, on to uh, 
the tasting with the whiskey. I think this is going to be quite interesting as it's got, as it's quite a light cigar, there's not a great, like Grim was saying, not a lot of pepper, not a lot of spice. So it'll be interesting to see how, how it stacks up against um, the lighter whiskey. So what we have tonight, we have, first off, we have a fairly light, youngish whiskey. This is the Kilkerran uh, Work in Progress 3. So it's about seven years old. It's kind of light, it's serially. It should actually quite, should work quite nicely with um, with the uh, with the cigar. Uh, next up, we've got um, the Redbreast 12-year-old cast strength. Um, now, as you know, Redbreast is a pure pot still Irish whiskey. Has quite a sort of spiciness to it and quite a bite. So it will, again, it will be interesting to see how that compares with this fairly light cigar. And then we have the uh, the Bunnahabhain. Uh, the peated Bunnahabhain, the uh, Tok Cha, which I've probably pronounced completely and utterly wrong. Um, but this is, again, a very young whiskey, uh, very heavily peated. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how the sort of the peat uh, works with the slightly sort of woody, leafy character. Um, and then finally, we've got uh, the Glendronach. Obviously, uh, it'd be interesting to see how something that's been aged in both Oloroso and uh, Pedro Zimenez casks, which has that raisiny, sweet character, um, how that will uh, evolve with uh, with the cigar. So, it will be, uh, I think this will be a really interesting tasting, I think. Hmm. But a few draws in, a little bit more, a little bit of spice coming through. Um, the sweetness is getting a little bit more sticky, a little bit more... Not toffee like, but it's giving a sticky coating in my mouth. Um, still woody. Yeah, sort of a bit sappy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, sort of cedary sap. Mm. But it's kind of losing those sort of like biscuity, leafy sort of flavours, and it's getting so you're starting to get a bit of spice, and there's a little bit of pepper lingering. It's a, uh, it is coming. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> first at this one this is the bit where I'm completely clueless by the way <laughs> <laughs> right so the kill Karen so we'll, we'll do a nosing first uh, and then we'll progress on to seeing how the palate works with uh, um, with the cigar so yeah it's it's quite light it's got got some sort of gristy character slight bit of coastalness uh, some salinity some some lovely apricot fruit sort of mm. all sitting underneath that mm. Um, and it's it's got a, a lovely a lovely aroma to it. It's got some nice some um, nice fruitiness and uh, and and youthful. But it's not sort of it's not that youthful cereally kind of character. So um, so yeah, nice nose, and um, we'll try try the palate. Yeah, quite full. Mm, definitely. Quite robust for a young whiskey. Um, again, that barley uh, and apricot is up first. A bit of salinity afterwards. You can feel the um, the saltiness uh, in the uh, the aftertaste. Mm. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how how taking a draw yeah. on this will be. So. Tastes a lot less in the cigar. Yeah, mind you, yeah, I'm not getting a great deal from no, the, from the combination the, of the two. Still, the overpowering finish from the whiskey and just a little bit of wood from the cigar, but nothing really. It's just this completely overpowers this cigar, which is surprising considering it's not not a, a particularly heavy malt. No, and this is a medium to fuller bodied cigar, mm. even though it's not starting quite that way. But right, yeah. So I'm going to. Try drawing and then uh, and then then try some of the whiskey and see if it's how it works the other way round. Kind of makes it a little bit more mellower, actually. Mm. A little bit sweeter as well. Yeah, mm. a little bit sweeter and obviously a little bit of smoke. No, not a surprise. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean they don't really sort of go well. No, no, the, the balance isn't quite there. Like you say, it's the, the flavours of the whiskey really kind of like um, 
overpower the uh, the cigar, which is quite quite interesting. Still got a problem with the uh, so slight bit of canoeing, but no bitterness in the flavour, so. Right, okay, uh, on to the red breast then. Let's, uh, let's see what this uh, nose gives us. Uh, it's pungent, mm. pungent, spicy with that lovely nip of the, uh, of the, um, the pot steel grains. That's, it's got a little bit of smokiness. Mm. Um, or is that just the room? It wasn't just the room. <laughs> <laughs> you could well be right on that one. Some lovely sort of soft autumnal fruit. But it's that spicy, spicy, grainy nip. Mm. Mm. That is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the the, the standard twelve-year-old is is absolutely gorgeous, but this this really is taking it up a notch. So, mm. very nice. Right. Okay. Um, let's try it on the palate and um, combine it with the uh, cigar then. Wrong way around. <laughs> Again, it softens it a little bit, but it's that lovely, lovely grainy, spicy bite. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> oh, and some alcohol. <laughs> Did I mention this is 57.7? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's got, it's got some lovely ap apricot and, um, oh, the spices. Oh, mm. This is just really made feeling really, really good. Mm. That is lovely. Whoa. Got a bit of a hit as well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right, let's see, try it the other way around then. I'm not much of a drinker, by the way. <laughs> now it's interesting, you do it the other way around. Oh, well, hell, oh no. <laughs> As you do it always. the other way round, you take a draw on the cigar, then the whiskey, and you get loads and loads more spice. Mm. You get a slight herbal kind of tang on the finish, but well, I'm definitely from this. Mm. Yeah. Slight florally, herbally hit on the finish, but... There's a little bit of spice developing now on the, mm. on the cigar. That creamy kind of biscuity sort of flavour is coming back as well, but I don't know again if that's the contrast from the whiskey. I think that I think these these work a little bit better. Mm. I mean, it's it's probably the spiciness of the yeah. uh, of, of the whiskey that's actually sort of almost drawing out some more spice from, from the, the actual cigar. cigar. So but, yeah, mm. so far out of the two, the red breast is a uh, yeah definitely uh, definitely works that works the best so far. So. Right, so we're pretty much, pretty much at the halfway point now. Um, my burn issue has evened itself out nicely, and uh, anyone who watches my other videos knows that I've finally done what I always do at the start, which is deband. So apparently, um, in England, we're supposed to deband, but I'm being American and I'm leaving mine on, so I'm kind of showing off, <laughs> showing off for this sake where we ride, basically. Um, <clears throat> Flavour-wise, it's getting a bit more pepper, black pepper there. There's some more spice. There's some slightly tangier woods. Hints of coffee, these little herbal notes every so often, but nothing too rich. No, it's not not changed a huge amount apart from the sort of uh, the, the peppery mm. character, I think. But no, it's a uh, a lot lighter than what I expected. Like I say, it's a lot lighter than the Regio, but and it's quite a fast smoke. Um, I say the burn is so easy, the draw's so light and easy. You put no effort into it. But no, it's a uh, well, I am quite enjoying this. But yeah, it's a lovely cigar. Mm. Yeah, really nice. Okay, on to the next whiskey with Chris. On to the next whiskey. Right, okay. Monsieur, mm. the glass. Right, okay. So, this is the, the, the Peter de Bonnehaven. Um, so, this is going to be really interesting to see how this stacks up. Um, so, nose first. Yeah, lots of, lots of barley. 
quite a bit of alcohol for something that's only uh, only 46 percent a slightly sort of earthy uh, manure-y kind of mm. peat going on here it's uh, as, as you sort of like aerate it a bit more that the, the peat is coming sort of more more to the uh, the fore of this uh, of this nose but there's there's some nice nice sweet fruit and and some elegance. I mean, Bonhaben, um aged in American oak does have that uh, lovely um, elegance to it, which, as you well know, is kind of a little bit lost in the uh, distillery bottlings of certainly the twelve year old and the, the eighteen where there's more sherry cask. So, um, yeah, this is this is a nice nose. So uh, it will be uh, interesting to see how this uh, goes on the palate. Nice. Mm. Mm. It's very smooth, yeah. herbally, medicinal peat. Um, quite full, a bit short. The alcohol sort of like, you know, kind of like shortens it a little bit. Um, I mean, I have tasted this with water and it, it does kind of fall apart a little bit with water. So, um, but there's some coffee, some manure, um, a little bit of burnt wood. Um, so, let's let's see so how this goes. Not a lot on the finish at all, is there? No, so no, it does. It's just it's gone pretty gone, much. Yeah. Go, yeah. Sweetens it again, doesn't it? Mm. And then re there's no 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 peat. It seems to have sort of almost kind of cancelled out the sort of peat flavour. And in actual fact, all you're kind of left with really is just sort of. And it loses the sharpness from the alcohol as well. You don't really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but it kind of makes it a little bit sort of a little bit flat, a little bit one-dimensional, and um, it doesn't really kind of work. I don't think. I don't know. Try the draw with it, and then. I did it the other way around just then, so. Kind of sweetens the cigar up a little. Yeah, but I'm getting more more of the woody cigar mm. smoke and um, flavours than, than, than the whiskey yeah. itself. So this is actually, strange enough, well, it's probably strongly stronger flavoured than the Kilkerran. Yeah. The, the cigar is actually overpowering oh, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, that's peculiar. That's it. It could be the point in the cigar because we're at the uh, we're at the sweet spot. We're at the nub point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this cigar. The little hints of pepper, uh, only there on the draw, completely gone on the finish. I don't know. This is. Right, okay, on to the Glendronach. Um, as you know, this is uh, aged in both uh, Oloroso and sweet uh, Pedro Zimenez casks, so uh, let's um, let's see what uh, the nose gives us. Um, yep, so you get you get the sweet, sort of slightly raisinated, mm. sort of PX kind of character. Um, very full, very sweet, very rich. Little little bit of sulphur, a little bit of smoke, but again, that could be due to the atmospherics. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice nose. It's it's you don't get very much obviously distillery character because of the casks, but for for a, for a sherry whiskey, it's it's pleasant. It has to be said. Not that I really know much, but out of the four, I prefer the nose on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. Let's uh, let's try it on the the palate then. Um, so which way around are we doing it? Yeah, mm. I've no idea. <laughs> yep. It's got a nice sweetness. Um, bit of alcohol burn. Bit of, bit on the edge. Um. Yeah, it's just pleasant. It's it's all about the, the cask. There's sort of like dried fruit, raisins. It's all in the finish, though, really, isn't it? It's it is. Yeah, mm. it kind of like sort of starts. There's a little bit of a gap, and then, yeah, it, then it finishes. Mm. 
again um, kind of like you're getting the, the woodiness of the cigar coming mm. coming through on it it's actually actually the, the finish is a lot drier mm. taste it taste yeah. the cigar with it it's um hmm yeah Does add more fruitiness and sweetness to the cigar. That's for certain. You don't get too much of the wood on the cigar. You get it when you take a drink, but through the draw on the cigar, it loses that woodiness. I'm just left with the lingering sweet taste of of the whiskey. Mm, I'm getting quite quite a sort of dry finish. Mm. It seems to sort of um, don't know, emphasize the emphasize the alcohol to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, it's it's not not a, not mm. a bad combination. Quite pleasant. Mm. Oh, it'd be a shame to leave it to waste. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, let's let's sum up these combinations then. So um, with the, with the Kilcarran, um we think um, the kind of the Kilcarran just, although being a fairly light whiskey, it had a lot of gristy barley mm. kind of character, which just kind of like um, overpowered the sort of the flavours of the cigar. Um, the Red Breast, lovely, lovely spicy, uh, intense whiskey, quite alcoholic as well. Yeah, <laughs> just a bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that probably worked. I think that worked really well. It kind mm. of drew out the sort of spicy yeah. character of the cigar with it. Um, like you've not really, it's not really come back. Only in between, when we've not been filming, you got more of the pepper and spice on the cigar, but mixed with the rest of the whiskers, you hardly taste it at all. It's pretty much mm. lost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and with the Bunnahabhain, it's it kind of cancelled the sort of the, the, the peatiness of the Bunnahabhain out, which was which was quite interesting to see. Um, and it kind of made it a little, the, the whiskey itself a little bit on the sort of the, the one-dimensional side. Um, so. It, Probably surprisingly, well, maybe not surprisingly, it didn't kind of quite work so well with uh, with the peated one, um, and with the Glendronach. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I liked it. I yeah. liked the sweetness. It gave it the sweetness mixed with the slightly woody flavours of the cigars. Even though on the cigar you don't taste a lot of the wood, but on the whiskey you get the woody taste mixed in there as well. But it kills the taste of the cigar. But the combination of the cigar. On the whiskey is nice, but the other way around, it's you don't taste a great deal on the cigar. Yeah, it added more to the whiskey than what it. Yeah, added I, to the I think cigar. so. Although it it did it did sort of like lead to me the finish a little bit on the alcoholic side. Um, I'm getting some. Mind you, now after I've, I've after we've tasted that, I'm getting more sort of like of the the, the, the prunes and mm. um, uh, sort of dried raisins. And I think. You know, take a mouthful of that, leave it for a couple of minutes, and then take a draw. And I think that works. Yeah, works really, really nicely. But I think, as a combination, while you're drinking um, and smoking at the same time, I think um, for me personally, I think the red breast kind of works uh, works the best because it just brings out mm. those spicy flavours. Just tone it down with a little bit of water. <laughs> it's just, it's just almost a hit in the face. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, so I think um, all told, quite quite a, a, an interesting uh, in, interesting tasting. So uh, um, I uh, first of many, first of many. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think um, uh, and, and choose another cigar and maybe do a rum tasting together. I think that would be um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, the show. And as always, uh, all four of these whiskies are available on our website www.gauntness.com. Uh, of course, you can. Uh, read my tasting notes on the WordPress blog and you can't quite read the tasting notes for this on your blog because no, it's not there yet. But I don't do them yet but <laughs> I've, I run a tobacco blog, it's full of reviews, mrtobacco.co.uk, I have a YouTube channel, I'll get Chris to stick a link in the uh, bucket or the description below and uh, also the Gauntley's Tobacco, um, Gauntley's Tobacconist also has a YouTube channel and a blog so get ready for a bombardment of links below this video but like Chris said, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. So. Good ramming and good evening. Sarah? <laughs> Both trying to wrap up the same time. Wrap up the same time. <laughs> <laughs>
someone has to see me cock at white <laughs> <laughs> Is that a match or is that a sparkler? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really does not want to work. <laughs> so why don't we do it on camera? Hmm, <laughs> sulfur. <laughs> it's some sulfur, yes. Yeah, there's sulfur in that sherry cask. They're hopeless, aren't they? EMS matches, shit. <laughs> That's why we give them to you for free when you buy cigars. <laughs> We're about, about at the halfway point. Um, the burn, my burn issue has evened out. Very, very loose ash though, falls off very easily. Um, it's not the whitest ash you've ever seen. There's kind of some dark greys, blacks, some slightly lighter colours, but luckily nothing brown in. <laughs> Can I ring you back, Kim? Hmm. Worked rather well, I thought. Yeah, we'll just see how it comes out. Mm. I'm not used to sitting and not saying anything, for even for 30 seconds. 